for the next segment of today's lineup that is a guest lecture on tackling knee pain now may i invite the chairpersons dr shashi karnaratna and dr lalinda dias on stage thank you uh, so the next lecture is a very interesting and common problem to the internist tackling knee pain a practical approach so we got a very eminent speaker dr chaturika dandeniya she is a senior lecturer in medicine and honorary uh, consultant in rheumatology and rehabilitation attached to department of medicine faculty of medicine university of peradeniya so over to you dr chaturika thank you very much dr lalinda for that kind introduction so after a lot of uh, very eminent and high uh, end talks about new guidelines and everything i'm going to take you to old school so this is like very much down to practice so we'll talk about how we are going to see and tackle a patient with knee pain in your day to day care so these are my conflicts of interest so what i will be uh, highlighting like this is not in order but throughout this what you will be hearing is the practical anatomy of the knee which we have all conveniently forgotten by now and the common causes of knee pain through a few case histories a few pitfalls that everybody has to be aware of and what is the summary and the take home message so knee pain in the adult what is the cause like the commonest cause i would say like you will all agree that it is osteoarthritis to the point that whenever somebody comes and tells you i have knee pain you start thinking okay this is osteoarthritis but i'll tell you why you should not so we'll start with the first patient who was an obese woman with unilateral knee pain so this patient was a 32 38 year old female presented uh, with left knee pain progressively worsening over about one year period and she was very obese with a bmi of 35 kg per square meter and uh, this was obviously in candy so there are no houses in candy practically that has no stairs so her house was no exception and she had she lived in a three story house and she had three kids and she was a housewife which meant she was climbing up and down the stairs all the time and with this bmi the obvious diagnosis was osteoarthritis as which that she had been treated however there had been little relief from the interventions up until this point and this was the x-ray of the knees as you can see there is a uh, like joint space narrowing with osteophyte formation subchondral sclerosis so like everything screams osteoarthritis so before we move on to what happened with the patient i will take you through the anatomy of the knee like you can see here but i would say this is the anatomy of the knee for an orthopedic surgeon because like they see the bone the cartilage that's all that comes into our mind when we say the knee joint is the bone the cartilage and the ligaments but we forget the most important other other part which is the physician's knee so this is this should be the graph that should come to your mind when we talk about the knee from a physician's point of view yes there is bone there is cartilage there are ligaments however in addition there are fat pads there are bursae and there is the synovium and there are muscles in and around the knee so when you think about the cause of a knee pain in any patient all these should cross your mind it could be arising from a ligament it could be arising from a fat pad close by or it could be arising from the synovium not just the cartilage and the bone so the case one so on further questioning of this lady it was very evident that she found it difficult to walk as soon as she woke up in the morning but you will agree with me a lot of patients with osteoarthritis also say this the first thing in the morning is difficult to walk however after starting the daily work up after about 1 hour the pain improved so this is not mechanical pain this is clearly an inflammatory pain because up to 1 hour she is all right but uh, like she's in pain but then walking on the bum knee she feels better it can't happen with osteoarthritis and it also during the daytime it got difficult to get going after a period of rest longer than 30 minutes and if she walked for long the pain would aggravate again so like it, if it was a day that she spent on the feet all the time now after getting up in the morning for about 1 hour the pain is bad and then it improves but then if she goes on working the pain will worsen again so that is only to be expected because it's a pathological part of your body so turning on the bed woke her up in the latter part of the night this is a very important symptom that we tend to miss in patients with inflammatory arthritis they are like they would say like at night i have pain and you would think okay towards the night it is pain so it it should be osteoarthritis not really ask them which part of the night because the latter part of the night that is after 12 midnight if they wake up uh, on turning from side to side that is inflammatory 
and there were no other joints involved. So this was only the knee. And on examination, her left knee was swollen with a boggy feeling and an effusion. So remember, examining the patient's knee joint, particularly in an obese patient, is a challenge because their knees look swollen anyway. But if you are examining the correct technique with the patient supine on the bed, it's not impossible. So this boggy feeling was what gave away the case because the boggy feeling is something like I can't explain through a lecture. You need to get your fingertips practice to identify the difference between how you would feel an effusion, how you would feel synovitis. So the boggy feeling is described in books as akin to like touching the bread dough. Uh, the, the ladies would know, I guess, like what it feels like when you want to make roti or something, when you mix the dough. And the final thing, like it's rubbery, it goes in, doesn't stay in like it comes out. The, the properly made dough. So that is the feeling that you get at your fingertips. So I aspirated, and this is what the aspirate looked like. And you will see that like in the normal knee osteoarthritis, you would have seen the aspirate. It's like straw color, but you can see through. It's very clear straw color. But here, you can't really see through. It's, it's very opaque. So this opacity is because of the high inflammatory exudate. So the opacity is given by uh, actually the white cells. So. Uh, like with, the, with this, now it was a clinical diagnosis. I didn't have any investigations on the presentation, but with the clinical diagnosis, I started on treatment as for an inflammatory arthritis, and I asked her to come back with all the reports in two weeks' time. And clinically, she was markedly improved. The ESR was 75, full blood count showing a mild anemia, and the rheumatoid factor was 385, which was grossly elevated. So the diagnosis, this was a seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. So there have been many similar cases. To summarize a few, there was a 34-year-old male who was like he was working in the Middle East, uh, in, uh, in a Middle Eastern country, and he was working at a shipyard, so a lot of heavy work. And he had been treated for two years as for osteoarthritis of the left knee. But like he was a slim-built person, 34 years old. Why would he develop osteoarthritis only on one knee? And on history, there is a history of ulcerative colitis. So then why was this managed as osteoarthritis? The reason was this, because the inflammatory markers are normal, bowels are not active, full blood count was normal. So everybody assumed that this was an osteoarthritis. On examination, there was again florid synoitis of the left knee that was affected. And the diagnosis, this was an IBD-related peripheral spondyloarthritis. Again, with treatment, he markedly improved and went back to the country while on methotrexate. So why are the inflammatory markers normal? Because remember, in about 60% of cases of spondyloarthritis, the, the previously so-called seronegative arthritis, we no longer call it that. It's now classified as spondyloarthritis. In about 60%, inflammatory market, uh, markers are normal. Okay, so normal inflammatory markers do not exclude an inflammatory arthritis. And this is the lady whose legs you saw on the first slide. So she was a 70-year-old female with a bilateral knee, so-called osteoarthritis, for about 10 years, so onset at the age of 60. But she had an acquired asymmetrical valgus deformity. And if you look carefully at the picture, it's not only the knees that are involved. You, can, you might be able to see that the ankles are swollen too. So on the rest of the examination, she actually had bilateral DIP joint involvement as well. So this was, and the history, it was an inflammatory pain. Again, worse in the morning, gets towards, better towards the middle of the day. So again here, the diagnosis was a peripheral spondyloarthritis, and she had a strong family history of skin psoriasis, which makes this most likely a psoriatic arthritis. Because the, uh, another important thing is, in psoriatic arthritis, in about 10% of patients, they never develop skin or nail lesions. They may just have a like family history, strong family history of a, a first degree family members being affected, but they, the patient themselves might not get the skin or the nail involvement of psoriasis. And this patient I saw only day before yesterday, a 73 year old female with 20 years of bilateral knee pain. Again, I, I thought I will add, include this, I actually included this slide only this morning. Because this deformity is classic, and like I have only seen this only twice, this is only the second patient in my life. Because this knee deformity, you call it the windswept deformity. It's as if the wind has come from a side and has uh, like kind of hit you from the side. So on one side you have valgus, on the other side you have varus deformity. So this is classic for poorly managed rheumatoid arthritis. So she never had uh, like rheumatoid arthritis as the diagnosis before. So again, very, very typical inflammatory features in the history. 
and the aspirate there is, you can see it's an inflammatory infiltrate. I took the photo over the Asari Hospital Candy lettering because you can see that you can't read the letters beneath the syringe. So that is an opaque infiltrate. So again, when I saw her yesterday with the reports, it was a seropositive RA, like clinically suspected. So the learning points from these four cases. Knee pain is not always due to osteoarthritis, and even when a patient is obese, old, and has all the correct risk factors like heavy work, stair climbing, and all that, still think could be something else. And in a patient with knee pain, you have to always maintain a high index of suspicion of inflammatory arthritis. If the patient is less than 45 years old at the age of onset, unilateral knee involvement has other joint involvement or maybe a history of other joint involvement, which has now resolved and has a history of, or a family history of psoriasis or inflammatory bowel disease, and has a valgus deformity. Valgus is when the distal part, the part that of the limb that is distal to a joint is moving away from the joint, you call that a valgus. So in this, these three, the third one is the valgus. So valgus almost never happens with primary osteoarthritis. Primary osteoarthritis, they come with the varus or the bow leg deformity. So if the knee is deforming on the other way, think it is most likely inflammatory. So moving on with the learning points, another very important thing. X-ray of the knees are more misleading than diagnostically useful. Because if you do an e-X-ray in anybody over the age of 40 years, you are going to detect changes suggestive of osteoarthritis. But that doesn't mean that the cause for the knee pain is the, those changes that are there. It's similar to doing MRI for back pain. At the end of the day, you will be treating the MRI rather than the patient. Because the patient has back pain for something entirely different like the most frequent and I find hilarious course is the patient is complaining of back pain because of coxigodynia and you have been managing for a L4, L5 dysprolapse which has nothing to do with the pain. So that's why they don't improve with the treatment. So this is the only research I'm going to talk about. So this research supports my theory. Like they, they looked at uh, the utility of plain x-rays in the investigation and management of young patients, sports patients. Uh, in complaining of knee pain, and they found that plain radiographs had no impact on the clinical management of 97.3% of patients who are younger than 40 years. And this figure does not increase markedly, uh, like decrease markedly if you go for patients above 40 years either. So in my clinic, I have put a rule that any medical officer who is ordering a knee x-ray, ha it has to go through me. Because don't blindly order knee x-rays, you are not going to change your management based on the findings on the x-ray. And normal inflammatory markers do not exclude a diagnosis of inflammatory arthritis, and it can present as a monoarthritis. So the second case was an immobile patient with knee pain, but normal knee joints. This is a very interesting patient uh, who was a male, 50 years old, from Mahiangania. He came with bilateral knee pain. His gait was very stiff, like when he was coming into the, uh, the clinic room, I observed that he found it very difficult to walk. He was very stiff. And sitting on standing from the uh, sitting as well as standing from the seated position were both affected. However, the X-ray of the knee joints show only early degenerative changes. And she, he had been uh, managed as having knee osteoarthritis for three years. And the most striking feature, I would say, you would agree with me, is that the symptoms are clearly out of proportion to the radiological findings. It's only mild degenerative changes. Why can't the patient walk? Meaning there is something missing in between the history and the imaging. And we all know what is missing is examination. So knee joints, again on examination, revealed nothing much. There was only mild crepitus, no significant other findings. However, on hip examination, bilateral hips, the range of motion was very significantly affected. So this is not that patient's X-ray. Unfortunately, I don't have a photo of that, but something similar to this. He had extensively advanced osteoarthritis of bilateral hip joints. So another thing that you need to remember so this was the diagnosis, is that imaging, like I told you before, can be misleading if you do it without a clinical diagnosis or a clinical differential diagnosis. And the knee examination is never complete if you don't do a simultaneous hip examination. So those who attended the, the recent pre-congress session on musculoskeletal examination in rheumatology that we had would uh, have gone through this. In the knee examination station, the uh, consultant there would have taught you, in a, any patient with the knee, you have to examine the hip. 
and the patient should therefore because you are examining the hip be examined on a bed or a couch so you can't completely examine a patient complaining of knee pain just seated on a chair and the third case so a lady with knee pain when sitting why would be their knee pain in, on sitting so this was a 43 year old female office worker who had pain in the right anterior knee for 6 months duration she described this as burning and sharp like electric shock like burning pain in front of the tibia and sitting for too long and climbing up stairs were both very difficult so sitting was also difficult so this is not the typical osteoarthritis that's been described and there's no lasting response to nsaids and the onset was following she had a fall onto the flex knee so in this figure fall onto the flex knee where do you think is the problem so there was severe tenderness just lateral to the patella tendon and it reproduced this burning type of radiating pain there was no joint line tenderness effusion or deformity so this was not OA and clinical diagnosis was an injury and impingement to the hofus fat, fat pad and this was later confirmed on mri scan so hofus fat pad is what you see just be, just behind the patella ligament the patella tendon so that fat pad is it's in a very tight space so if you fall onto the out uh, on, onto the flex knee it can get directly injured edematous gets impinged and causes severe pain so it completely improved with a local cortisone injection and the appropriate physiotherapy so you just don't send for the quadriceps strengthening there are other techniques that in you, you need to use and completely back to normal now so the learning points there are many soft tissue structures in and around the knee and systematically examining these in a patient of complain, complaining of knee pain will give you the diagnosis and this one lady with intractable knee pain but normal examination of the hip and knee i will just tell you the summary in the interest of time so this was again an old lady uh, who was complaining of severe right knee pain had been treated by the gp for nearly 6 months without any response at all to multiple different analgesics and presented to me examination was virtually normal so there was nothing much wrong the expected age related oa only but the pain was severe and it would wake her up at night and on going through the history she complained that she had a history of breast ca 15 years ago and she but she was okay so she was even discharged from the oncology follow up recently so the technician 99 scan i requested on the first visit itself because i suspected could this be bone mix but it came, came back normal so i had no diagnosis i was thinking could this be a tibial plateau fracture and i sent her for a ct and uh, during the ct they had some findings because of that they had to extend that to a ct chest abdomen pelvis and this is what they found so there's extensive metastatic disease everywhere extensive metastatic disease however the x ray was normal and the examination was normal and the technician 99 scan was normal so the learning points from this one severe intractable pain in relation to the joints or bone without any uh, significant clinical signs and waking the patient up from sleep and not responding to nsaids msk pains not responding to nsaids you should consider serious things such as infection and malignancy and the technician bone scan does not always demonstrate metastatic bone disease because it depends on the type of deposit you are looking for so the take home messages all knee pains are not due to osteoarthritis and inflammatory arthritis of the knee should not be overlooked because you will be looking at preventing deformity and key to the diagnosis is a proper history and a thorough examination of the knee and the hip relating to the basic anatomy of the joint will help in determining the exact origin of the knee pain and the conventional knee x-ray has minimal value in the majority of cases and definitely it cannot replace a good history and a good examination and my lectures will not be complete without a quote from this my favorite person from history sir william mosler who said listen to the patient he will tell you the diagnosis use your five senses learn to see learn to hear learn to feel learn to smell and know that by practice alone you can become expert thank you very much thank you dr dandenia for that excellent presentation uh, in the interest of time can we have only one question from the audience in the absence of any questions may i thank dr dandenia and invite dr lalindra dias uh, my co-chair to hand over the certificate of appreciation